Police officers have read it. What are you thinking when you see cases like George Floyd? Horrified. When you have someone in custody you are responsible for their safety and well-being. Why don't we see police officers or departments come out and condemn things like this when they happen? I was on a police subreddit yesterday and most people seem to agree with you, and stressing that this is less common than the media would have us believe. It was basically boiled down to yeah this is bad, the media jumps on it and the police are not set up to fight a PR battle with the media. I understand that argument, but when so many people agree that what happened is wrong, wouldn't it be a good move to stand up and say we do not condone this as an organization? It's a really bad look when they stay quiet or as is the case most of time, back up the officer in question. It's like if there was a problem with mailmen stealing packages, I would expect the post office to fire them, have them arrested, and let the public know that it won't be tolerated. We see police unions support politicians for election, but we never see them come together to condemn this sort of thing. It's just a really bad look for all the good cops out there and I wonder why they don't speak up more often. Houston Police Chief Art Acevedo is speaking and tweeting out against it. He used to be Austin's chief. I really appreciate him doing that. I have a degree in law enforcement and work in corrections in Minnesota. My thoughts are duck that guy. Nobody is taught to put their knee on a guy's neck and leave it there until he passes out and dies. He may as well have had his hands around the man's neck. If I were to go off the video evidence, the officer should be arrested for murder. That's the crazy thing about this case, it couldn't be more blatant. The footage was clear, long-lasting and heart-wrenching. If there isn't hell to pay with this clear of evidence then protests are absolutely justified. The Rodney King case had the same type of evidence and look where that went. I can't understand why, but these cops can get away with murder with a slap on the wrist unfortunately. What about that guy who was arrested because the cops broke into the wrong house and killed GF and in self-defense he shot? Shit cops. Thankfully I heard they dropped all charges against that dude. Still a tragedy. Did the officers who murdered the sleeping woman get charged for murder though? They shot her like eight times while she slept after working a double as an EMT, as a first responder during the coronavirus pandemic. In other words, dropping charges against the boyfriend is not enough? This woman was murdered, and she deserves justice. Yeah, that's not justice at all. Good news. We're not going to legally punish you for that time we murdered your life partner. This is how terrorists are created. Understandably, I must say when the state is corrupt like in America, I know, some people won't accept the truth. Justice falls in the hands of the people. Ah, uh, a post I can finally answer. Based in Scotland, I'm a police officer with five years service, two of which I have been a part-time officer safety instructor. During this training we go over retraining subjects and handcuff techniques that we use to AT. This includes all safety aspects including where to apply handcuffs, how tight they should be, ensuring the technique is done correctly and that the subject is in a controlled but safe position. Positional asphyxia is a vital topic we cover and it is reiterated time and time again that if a subject ends up on the ground we never, and I reiterate again, never, place any sort of weight on them. Hell even when sitting in the back of our cars, we wash them and ensure they can breath and are in a comfortable position for transport. What these cops did was just plain stupid, disproportionate, and frankly an embarrassment to policing. I'd also use disgusting if I'm honest. I just hope that people know we are not like this. Not a local, I'm a fed. Five years into the job. George Floyd was murdered and it's ducking disgusting. We're trained that anything involving the neck is a no-go and is considered deadly force. 
We were also trained that if you make an arrest in a prone position, you search and then immediately move them onto their side or a seated position because the risk of asphyxiation is so great. If a suspect says they can't breathe, believe them and take measures to correct to it. This training is reinforced at least twice a year in our use of force training. These officers deserve to spend the rest of their lives in prison. I'm a former police officer and so have had plenty of training in physical restraint of individuals being arrested. There is no police academy training officers to kneel on someone's neck to subdue them. That's how you kill a person. There is extensive training on how to avoid seriously injuring a person while restraining them, and I guarantee you every one of these officers was trained to never strike a person in the neck or choke them. The officer who killed him is very clearly liable for manslaughter at the very least, and I think the other officers who stood by have some accountability as well because they knew damn well that was not how you handle a person and should have stepped up. Hey, race my question. Given that this officer was actively killing a man through an illegal use of force, what would have happened had a non-police officer stopped him? Granted, then the outcome wouldn't have killed the man and thus there would have been no death to show that the use of force was obviously excessive. But that's the part that really makes me angry. Anyone who would have tried to stop this would have been arrested on the spot for assaulting an officer, even though the officer was literally murdering another human being. Lawyer here. While the literal text of most justification necessity defenses would apply to using force in that situation, most likely the Good Samaritan would be charged with obstruction or interference with public duties. They would then have to convince a jury that there was no other reasonable recourse short of physical force. That's a tall order and I'd be real nervous for my client. In a worst case scenario, our hypothetical Samaritan gets tossed or shot or killed for their troubles. My thoughts? Record and verbally demand the officer stop is probably the wisest course. But, that is exactly what happened, and clearly the end result is that the cop didn't stop and someone died. The wisest course because unfortunately a more interfering action may get you seriously hurt or killed. Yeah, those situations don't often have win-win endings unfortunately. I'd put a serious tag if I were you. Cop here. Disgusted. There are a 1,000 reasons why this shouldn't have happened. Simple, easy, steps that should have been taken. Lessons that policing has learned over the past 200 years and basic things taught in every academy. Make no mistake, this was murder. Maybe not premeditated murder, but nonetheless murder. I will be angry if those officers do not get indicted. He's apparently been involved in at least two other deaths including shooting a fleeing suspect in the back. I don't know given that history premeditation seems reasonable. That is inexcusable. Retired after 28 years. Nothing less than murder. All the guys I worked with would never have considered doing something like that. You treat combative in custodies once they're secured as human beings. Nothing should be personal. Once they've been subdued and you are safe as an officer, you stand him up, pat him down and understand that your arrestee is at a low point in his life. Give him some dignity and you will generally get his respect. It works 90 plus percent of the time. That man was subdued and nobody should have been on him at that point. I was a cop in the military. In the police academy this was one of the things that taught us not to do as it could crush the windpipe. The only time I was ever taught to use chokes and neck holds was in combat training for deployments. But when we got back we always had to attend retraining classes to relearn what we can do stateside. It's amazing that time and time again you see militaries saying this is exactly not what to do but for some reason the civilian trainers seem to forget to teach the same. Would I rather be a pow to an American soldier versus American cop? I'll take soldier every time. You know what's sad is I've been told police agencies don't want to hire NPS because they're harder to retrain, yet time and time again we prove them wrong by being better trained in humanitarianism.
Well, clearly they're right. MPS are harder to retrain in their way. Retired. It disgusts me as the job is difficult enough as it is, working mostly in sensitive neighborhoods. Brutality like this makes it far more difficult. How difficult was it for you to build community trust? Did you have to continuously fight against atrocities such as the recent cases, or was your community more sheltered from those issues? Disgusted, especially by the frequency of these events. Glad that I work in a place where we're trained for years before we ever put on a uniform that communication is our greatest tool. Sad to know that this is going to happen again and again. I used to be a police officer. It was ducking embarrassing going out the day after something like this happened. One of the reason I quit was because I had no pride in my job anymore for the people doubting if I used to be a cop or not. This is the only proof I really have. In order to get the police officer flare on or protect and serve you need to send them odds a pic of your police issued ID haven't been to that sub since before I quit but here it is imager.com. I'm a police officer in California. I am absolutely disgusted by the officer's actions. When someone is in our custody you must treat them properly. I don't care if they are arrested for murder or forgery. They are a human with a story and they deserve to be treated with dignity and respect. I had tears streaming down my face watching the video of George Floyd. We swore to protect our communities and that's what we set out to do every day. Putting a knee into the neck of a handcuffed man for an extended period of time isn't protecting. A man has lost his life due to the gross negligence of an evil person. May he rest in peace.